One of the most common questions I get asked on this YouTube channel is what kind of software do I use to create the videos I make? Uh, what kind of screen recording programs do I use? What kind of audio editor do I use? What kind of video editor do I use? So I'm going to show you exactly the tools that I use to create my videos. I'll show you exactly what works for me for my use case. Uh, I may also give you some alternative programs that I don't use that may be more appropriate for what your needs are in your particular uh, case, you know, for your YouTube channel, whatever you plan on doing on YouTube. So follow along. The first thing I want to discuss is my webcam program. So right now I'm recording my desktop here. Let me show you how I record myself on webcam. Now, I opened up a program. It is called GUVC View. This is GUVC View. It is a webcam program. Uh, you guys never see the second window of GUVC View. This is basically your settings. GUVC View does uh, screen capture. It takes screenshots. It also does some video. Uh, it's got some audio settings. But mainly what I use it for is basically it opens up a, a window of my webcam showing me live and then I actually don't record through GUVC view I use a, another program to actually record my desktop called simple screen recorder I just leave the GUVC view window on my desktop and it gets recorded so uh, what I do usually is I size this window appropriately so usually I'm doing like a Linux distro review, so I don't want this window too big. So I usually make it, you know, kind of small. I try to uh, get all the borders out of it. I'm using OpenBox here. This is the OpenBox window manager. When I right click on the frame of the window, I go to layer and I choose always on top. It makes sure that my GUVC view cam window is always on top of every other window it's never hidden it's always up front the other thing I do is I undecorate this window basically boom the frame is gone now to move this window around I use the alt key and grab it with the mouse and I can drag this window around now no matter what I open say I open a full screen uh, Firefox web browser you see GUVC view is always in front even when I click on Firefox GUVC view always stays up front. If I have a virtual machine up and running of a Linux distro that I'm reviewing, GUVC view will always be in front of it. It never gets hidden. So that's the first program that I use, uh, GUVC view webcam, because I always uh, like to include some kind of image of myself, some uh, live video of myself in my videos. I, I think it makes the video a little more personable. A lot of people that do distro reviews or app reviews, they don't show themselves on camera. You know, you just hear their voice. Me, I like to, you know, put a face to the voice as well. Again, that, that's just a personal thing to me. It's just my little touch. So not you may or may not want to actually include yourself on camera, but if you do, GUVC View is a great little webcam program. All right, now that I have this open, how do I record my desktop? Simple Screen Recorder. All one word, Simple Screen Recorder. So if you're looking for it in the Debian repos, the Ubuntu repos, sudo apt install, Simple Screen Recorder, all one word. In the Arch repos, you would uh, use Pac-Man. Simple Screen Recorder, all one word. How does Simple Screen Recorder work? Well, it's actually pretty simple but it's a very powerful program. When you first open it, you get this screen here, you just click continue. And I have two different layouts, uh, input profiles here. I have one called full screen. Full screen is actually what I'm recording now. It is a full screen of my entire desktop. I have a triple monitor system on this computer and I have chosen to record the entire screen of my second monitor. That is what I'm recording right now. Now I have a different input that I call VBox for VirtualBox, and it records the second screen, but it records a fixed rectangle. Basically, it, it records the entire screen except like the last 24 pixels at the bottom. It does not record my tent to panel here at the bottom of the screen. Why do I not want that? 
Well, when I do a virtual box um, review or a virtual machine Linux distro review, let me open one. I'll show you why I do this. So let me open, taking a second for this menu to pop up, uh, Antergos GNOME. All right, and it pops up here on my monitor. Now, when I do my Linux distro re reviews, you guys never see this frame at the top of the virtual machine. Why? Because in OpenBox, I right-click on it again and choose Undecorate, and you guys never see that frame. You also never see my panel here at the bottom. This panel is actually on my host machine, not the virtual machine. And because in Simple Screen Recorder, I have this set to not to uh, record a fixed rectangle, you know, and I don't include the very last uh, 24 pixels at the bottom of the screen. So you guys do not see this panel when I do my Linux distro reviews. That's how that's achieved. And basically what you do is you can go here and choose select rectangle. And now in simple screen recorder, it lets you choose what portion of the screen you want to record. Once you get it to where you like it, you just let it go. And here is what it's going to record. Pretty simple. You click continue. Well, before we click continue, there's some other things. Do we want to record the cursor on our, our screen? I always have that ticked on because you guys need to see me moving the cursor around in what I do. Uh, also, record audio. If Do you want to record audio? Of course, you probably do. Have that ticked on. Then you need to tell it the back end. Pulse audio is probably what you want to use. But also and jack are also options. And then you need the source, which is your microphone. For me, it is my Blue Yeti microphone. I'm using the Yeti stereo microphone, digital stereo, whatever, what have you. Now, when you first plug in a microphone, if you've never used that particular microphone on your system and you have simple screen recorder up and running, it will not immediately appear in your source list here. So you need to click the ref refresh button. Like if I took my Yeti microphone, I unplugged it and I plugged in a different microphone. I need to hit this refresh button for that new microphone to appear in my sources list to change it to that microphone. Anyway, continue on. The next screen is pretty self-explanatory. Um, save as. This is where you want to save the file you're recording. Uh, right now I'm actually recording uh, I called my file SSR for Simple Screen Recorder. I'm saving it as an MP4 uh, because that's kind of your go-to format. MP4s are pretty safe formats, but for different containers, I mean, you can go uh, MKV. I've actually recorded some of my videos in MKV. It, it works well in Simple Screen Recorder. That's the only two formats I've ever used personally is MKV and MP4. But if you want to, you can go down here and choose other and you have the options of like a million different video formats you could record in. I don't know which ones work, which ones don't. I know MKV and MP4 work though, at least for me. Video codec, it's set to H.264. That's pretty much what everybody uses. That's what I recommend you use. Uh, I have allow frame skipping. I, I have that ticked on. I, I think it was ticked on by default. I don't think I played with that any um, audio. I, I record in 128 kilobits per second. Um, there's no reason really to go higher than that. It, it's kind of a waste. Then you click continue and the next screen is the simplest screen of all. You hit start record, you're recording. I've already hit start record on simple screen recorder. That's why I'm recording right now. If I wanted to stop, uh, this button instead of saying start recording would say pause recording. And I can pause it. Now, you can start and, and pause, start and pause, start and pause. It's one of the great things about Simple Screen Recorder is that you can actually pause the recording. In a lot of video uh, screen capture uh, programs, you start a recording and you stop a recording, then you create another recording. Uh, and then you have to go into a video editor later and you know put those things together. Not in Simple Screen Recorder. The pause function is one of the reasons I love Simple Screen Recorder for what I do. It saves me a lot of time uh, not editing video, basically. Uh, when you're done starting and pausing and you're ready to save that particular video clip, you just go down here and hit Save Recording and you're done. If for some reason you're recording, you mess up and you just want to get rid of that recording and start over, just hit Cancel Recording. 
that recording you messed up on is immediately deleted. Then just go back, start recording again, and you start over. Pretty simple. Now, for you guys that want to do live streaming, if you want to live stream on YouTube or live stream on something like Twitch, uh, especially if you're going to do like live gaming streams, uh, what you probably need is a more advanced program than Simple Screen Recorder. Actually, Simple Screen Recorder is pretty advanced, but it's not really for live streaming. OBS is what you need for live streaming. OBS is the open broadcaster software. Uh, basically, it records whatever it is you want to record. Uh, I can tell it to record a desktop. Right now, I don't have anything here, but I can uh, set it to capture a screen. It's actually capturing my first monitor, the one you guys never see on camera because I don't record it. Uh, it's record. You see, I have simple screen recorder on that monitor recording my screen right now. That's what I'm recording. Uh, you also see my file manager open. You see the files that are being created by simple screen recorder while I'm recording. I can put other stuff on the screen. I mean, I can put uh, like this image right here. I can put my little distro tube logo that'll be recorded on the screen. Uh, you know, you can put tickers, uh, you can put lower thirds, you can put all kinds of graphics. Uh, this is a pretty simple way, like if you wanted to do like some kind of news kind of channel and you wanted a lot of uh, graphics or tickers or scrolling text or anything, you can do all of that in OBS. Uh, also, as I mentioned, it is great for streaming. It's already got some built-in features for you guys that want to stream on YouTube or on Twitch. So I don't know a ton about OBS, so I can't really uh, do that much as far as a tutorial on OBS. I've only used OBS maybe six times myself for live streaming on YouTube. I've done about five or six live streaming events on YouTube so far, and I've used OBS uh, I still am kind of clueless on a lot of its features, uh, so I actually need to fam familiarize myself more with OBS. So let's discuss audio editing and video editing. Uh, by far the most popular free and open source audio editor out there is Audacity. Aud Audacity is a fantastic audio editor. Uh, available on Linux, of course, being open source software. Also available on Windows and Mac, I believe. Uh, let me pull a file over here, and I'm going to go ahead and show you what I do. Now, this is one of the video clips I've created here, uh, the very first clip of this video, actually, my little intro. And let me show you some of the features of Audacity that I use pretty much every time I make a video. The first thing you need to do is cut out some of the noise in the audio. Uh, when you record audio, uh, unless you're in like a professional recording studio, there's going to be extra noise that you won't cut out of that recording. You're going to hear the hum of your computer, the hum of monitors, the hum of your central air and heat in your house. Uh, just general background noise that you just can't get rid of. Uh, again, unless you're in a professional recording studio that is filtered, that can, you know, pretty much block out all outside noise. Uh, you're going to have background noise. And to get rid of it, what you do is you find a section of audio where you're not talking. So like the beginning of this video here was pretty much me waiting to speak. Yeah, I, don't, I really don't start speaking to hear. So I just pick a section of it because that's nothing but background noise. I go to effects here. I go to noise reduction. And then I choose get noise profile. And basically, Audacity figures out, hey, this is noise. We want to get rid of that. So now we choose the entire selection by clicking over here. And it selects the whole audio passage. Then I go back to noise reduction. And this time, I just click OK. And it's going to reduce the noise. You see how the noise is reduced here? The next filter I run this through is the compressor. So the compressor, all I do is I, I leave the default settings. I hit OK. And that is the compressor. And then I usually just export this as a MP3. For video editing, there's a ton of good video editors, actually good free and open source video editors available on Linux. But uh, 
Probably the most popular one is a program called Kden Live. It is the standard video editor in the KDE desktop environment. It's one of the KDE programs. A very powerful, very easy to use video editor. Uh, I've also used other video editors in the past. There's a program called Pitivi, P-I-T-I-V-I, Pitivi, that is a really nice video editor. Um, OpenShot is also out there. Um, there. There's quite a number of good video editors, but uh, probably the best one as far as free and open source software on Linux, Kdenlive. Uh, and you don't need to be running KDE to use Kdenlive. It doesn't have a ton of dependencies. Uh, it's not going to bring in like all of KDE when you install Kdenlive. So I recommend uh, pretty much everyone take a look at Kdenlive. Anyway, so that's the programs I use, guys. I use uh, pretty much every video that I make. If it's a Linux distro re review especially, I use GUVC View for my webcam, this window here. I use Simple Screen Recorder to actually record my screen, my desktop. And then after I'm done recording, I use Audacity to clean up and filter the audio. And I use Kden Live for my video editor to actually create the video that will, I will eventually upload to YouTube. So uh, anyway, it works for me. Uh, I, I'm pretty happy with my setup. Uh, I, and I've been able to, I think, get some pretty quality videos out there once I've learned how to use some of these tools. Again, I'm not a master at this. I've only been running this channel for about four months, uh, but I, I've gotten a little better, uh, certainly from where I started from. If you watch some of my earlier videos, for example, I really didn't know anything like about editing audio or filtering audio. The audio was pretty terrible in some of my earlier videos, especially compared to what I'm doing now. Uh, also, I was using a different video editor. I'm using Kden Live now. I was using PTV in those earlier videos. Uh, I don't know if that really makes much of a difference. I was pretty happy with the PTV video editor. But anyway, I just wanted to share this with you guys. As I said, we had some uh, viewers that have been asking me uh, about the programs I use to create these videos on my channel. Uh, one in particular, one of my, our regular viewers, a guy named Kerwin, who's from Australia, he uh, especially requested this video. So Kerwin, there you go, buddy. Take care. Peace.